Hey, welcome back everyone. So I'm really proud to present you the episode two of the podcast Go For It. So today we have uh, Alex and uh, same as with Joe. So I will ask him some questions and then we will play some uh, games. So the camera, it was quite warm over there, so the camera overheated a few times, so that's why you will probably notice a few cuts, but um, it should not avoid you to uh, get a, the good content. So if you enjoy this uh, podcast series, uh, please like and subscribe, so then I can do more. And uh, hope you enjoy. See you later. So today I've got guys. Uh, Alex. Welcome, Alex. Thank, Thank you for joining the podcast. Thank you, Hervé. It's a pleasure to be with you. Yeah, so we are in France, so see the lovely weather. South yeah. of France, yeah. Yeah, it's really a nice place. Yeah, really nice. So um, Alex is a software engineer. Yes, and, that's right. Um, um, so roughly the plan is we're going to ask Alex some questions about his uh, career, because how, how long have you been software engineer? Uh, no, I think it's between six and seven years, something like that. All right, so that's quite interesting career. So from the beginning to the end. Yes. And uh, we might ask him some questions about why he likes in software engineering and this kind of stuff. And after same as episode one, we're going to play some mini games. So you see, so um, it's a little bit interviewee, so... Oh my God! <laughs> we, we fail everything. <laughs> okay, 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 but it's cool. It's a good way to refresh uh, refresh stuff. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, um, so Alex, um, I guess we, don't, we can't really say who you work for. Yes, but, um, yes, I think... What, uh... When did you start? How did you start? Did you do something before software? Yeah, so... Yeah, I have to, I don't know how, how should I start that? But yeah, I, basically, I didn't study uh, computer science. Uh, so to explain you a bit, I, I uh, study many different things and I work in really many different jobs. So I study like uh, to be a nurse mm -hmm. and then uh, I stop uh, just before finish. In France. In France, yeah, sorry. Okay, yeah. Okay. So uh, b before that, yeah. I started my career in France, so I wanted to study uh, nurse, mm -hmm. and then I I, I uh, quit uh, the, the the final year because I didn't really like this, this job because mm -hmm. uh, yeah it, it wasn't really nice and also uh, a bit stressful, mm -hmm. and then I move on uh, on to um, a bachelor uh, degree in uh, science and sport. Okay, we, we call that uh, STAPS, Staps. In, yeah in yeah. France. So it's, it was to become a sport teacher. No, it? no, actually, uh, I, I wasn't sure uh, what I wanted to do at, at this point, but uh, there was like a kind of a bridge between my uh, nurses' uh, lessons and uh, sport science. So I said, okay, let's do another year of, of faculty. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and then after that, uh, I study uh, ergonomics because there was also a, a, a bridge between uh, sports science and ergonomics. All right, so for people who don't know so, ergonomics, so what is ergonomics? So to explain that simply, you have different kind of ergonomics, but for me, it was mainly to improve uh, work condition of people. Okay, okay. For example, I was, uh, I, I did an internship for six months in uh, Renault Trucks, mm -hmm. and basically you have a lot of um, uh, uh, factories, I mean, uh, Where? Yes, uh, workers are not exactly. Really... There, are, there are a lot of heavy weights, mm -hmm. and you basically you try to improve the working conditions. And okay, do you have uh, back issues, etc. So, so yeah, it, I mean, it was interesting. It was my final internship, but in the in the same time, at the same time, uh, I went to London because my sister and my brother-in-law were developers there, mm -hmm. and uh, basically, I just went to London and it just clicked in my head. And I say, oh my God, uh, I remember we drank a beer in Camden. It was during the summer. And I say, uh, oh my God, I need to, I need to live there. This is just uh, perfect. <laughs> so when was that London? The, the beginning the of London was like seven years ago. Yeah, I, think, I don't remember. It was, 
2013 or 14 or something like that. Okay. And so, uh, but I, I still have like um, last year of university, mm -hmm. but we discussed and they said me, okay, uh, you should probably learn some, uh, uh, some uh, computer science skills because this could be useful. Mm -hmm. So I say, yeah, it's cool because also it is my last year uh, in the university and I have a lot of free time because this is university, obviously you have a lot of free time. So you were still studying economics and it was yes, the last exactly. year in Yes, it was the last year. But okay. I have like only three days of work during the week oh, and okay. then I have a long weekend. Yeah. My last year I was studying ergonomics and I say, okay, I want to start to learn by myself computer science. So mm -hmm. I did a course on Coursera. Mm -hmm. which was uh, yeah. learning the, the basics of uh, Java and uh, object-oriented programming. Okay, okay. Really so, nice. yeah, it was the PFL uh, uh, University in uh, Lausanne in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. So it was really nice because it gave me, like, good fundamentals to really understand how it works. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so I, I, I did this course and I think it took me a few months. And then... Uh, when my internship was finished, was finished, I decided to move to London just to, okay, let's grab this chance uh, and try to find a job there. So I went to London and I stayed to my brother-in-law and my sister's place for a few months. Mm -hmm. And then in the meantime, uh, they helped me uh, to create like a, a web app in yeah. Sinatra uh, with it's, Ruby. It's Ruby, Ruby yes, framework. So so it's a Ruby, uh, a really lightweight framework just to to create a web application. Mm -hmm. And I create like a, a mini game. A, a mini game. So I really recommend people, uh, if you start to learn programming, this is a good way, I think, to, to create a web app and the mini game is really... Yeah, it's like entertaining and learning. Yes, exactly. Like, it's not boring. You so have a lot of rules, uh, like a warrior, okay, uh, health, uh, attack. I think it's really a good way to... To, to start pro programming. And then I did this, and then I start to have like some uh, interviews. And I remember the first interviews were by phone. And basically, I couldn't understand <laughs> <laughs> any words during the interview. So it was like, uh, and the guy was really nice, but for 30 minutes, he asked me questions, and Br I couldn't understand. British accent, isn't it? It's like no, British accent also, and because it was my first interview, a lot of stress. In... And I, yeah, I didn't know how to answer. So also, I have a recommendation, I think, it would be nice if you're not a native English speaker mm -hmm. to to try to try to do the interview uh, on site or oh, yeah, yeah, or yeah. with Zoom because by phone they speak sometimes very fast. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. You, it's the quality of the phone. Yeah, it's quality of phone exactly. This is not always That's really a really good tip. Yeah, yeah. The, the good thing. So yeah, I would recommend because this was my first interview and I say, oh my god, this will be hard <laughs> to carry on. Uh, and but uh, I think. Uh, after I did another interview yeah. for a company in Nova which was in London. <laughs> Je <vais muter> ça. <laughs> ah, okay. For a company in London. And uh, and it was, uh, yeah, it, it went fine. Uh, I, I found uh, uh, my first job as a junior. The team was really great. It Ju was... Junior software engineer. Junior software engineer. Mm -hmm. Really good. So the team was great. Uh, it was really a mix of nationality. And so, would you say when you started that first job, so you managed to dip into software engineering? Did you like um, your learning curve were like exploded, or did you learn a lot in the few years, or was it really hard to grow up? Uh, yeah, I think. Uh... Yeah, I think you definitely learn when you join a company mm -hmm. because uh, I think people maybe don't see yeah, um, there is a certain way to work in a company. You know, you have to interact with people. Yeah. Also, yeah. you have to take into account sensibility of people. Like uh, when you do some review of a merge request. Yeah. You, you, you know, you, you have you a lot want, of human you relationship. Be, you want to be diplomatic. You don't want to. Yeah, exactly. Them. Diplomatic. Okay. And also, of course, uh, as I was a junior, I was learning uh, a lot of, of new things. And uh, the good thing is I, I had some people to help me also, because uh, when you start as a junior, it can be overwhelming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have some time stress. And it was a basic, uh, I remember, it was a basic uh, Rails application, uh, and we were hosted on, Hero, uh, on Heroku. I think it was also the beginning of AWS, AWS. with EC2 instances. Uh, Very nice. So, yeah, it was a really good uh, good uh, first experience. Nice, really nice. So that was then that company, and then you move into another one. You carry yes. on learning, but you stayed in Ruby, right? You... Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, fo I focus on, uh, on Ruby. Yeah, no, 
Yeah, that, that's interesting for the people because obviously you know we're on a Golang channel, but yes, I mean you you've done many many years of Ruby, but that's interesting to tell people like, have you tried other languages and how do you why do you stick with Ruby and you you probably love Ruby, isn't it? Yeah, I mean I like it. Uh... To be honest, yeah, it's just that uh, I I think I learn uh, some knowledge with Ruby, and then yeah, I, I kind of always apply to, to companies uh, that had this ecosystem. And at the time, it was really like being on London. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the interesting thing is like in France, it just came a few years after. Mm -hmm. But also when I came back in France, the Ruby ecosystem was really big, and also the salaries were uh, like the bigger in Ruby Wages, yeah. because it was quite hard to find a good Ruby dev. Yeah, so Alex came back to France after... When, when did you come back? Yeah, I think uh, three years ago. Three so years uh, maybe, ago. yeah, I can explain uh, yeah, the yeah, other yeah. companies uh, yeah, that Karen, I did in London. If, yeah, if, if you have any... So we have like enough timeline. Yeah, yeah, go, yeah. go for it. And after that, maybe we can speak about uh, more technical stuff. Or yeah, yeah, of course, of course. But, so yeah, I have this first company, which was a basic... Uh, uh, crude application and basically they had redundancy so they start to fire many people not great yeah not great not but great. yeah this is part of uh, business of, of business and uh, the i remember the awful thing is that i was the last uh, dev maintaining the <laughs> infrastructure so i had a lot of stress you know that uh, me <laughs> yes and i also i remember i was really in um, how do you say that? Uh, hungry? No, I, I, the pronunciation bad. But basically, the, when I, someone, we were two developers at the end, and the last developer he left. But before that, he wanted to do like a big upgrade, which was uh, bumping Rails from two point zero to four point zero. That was a lot of breaking changes. That was exactly, yeah. and he, he basically wanted to decide uh, to do that for training purpose. And then the idea was just, okay, I will do that. And then I, I release, I deploy, and then I, I, I leave. And you have to handle that. So uh, I put like a stop. I said, no, there is no way. Uh, we can do it from three to three to three to four, and I can manage that. But you're not going to do that for me. Uh, and you were really young at the time. Right? Yeah, exactly. Like I was. Two years exactly. Of software, so that was... I was like a junior and handling hops. I was always like. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was a really stressful time, so I found another uh, company which was really nice. Uh, and then, like, it was a bit, um, uh, yeah, I, I think the, it was a bit different because uh, we didn't call it like a microservices architecture, but we had like multiple services. It was not anymore uh, just one single application, modernity Mod application. Modific application. <laughs> we had few services like that were communicating with each other, but it wasn't like really isolated like uh, microservices. Okay. To be honest, I don't think uh, I work for any company like we, which really focus on having like small services. Uh, okay. Uh, so I, I joined this company, and then also uh, it was really a nice time. I stayed for two years and a half, and then they are redundancy too. And <laughs> that was bad. And the problem is like they um, they start to fire many people, and the atmosphere felt really bad. So I decided to just uh, give my uh, resignation. Yeah, resignation. Yeah. Uh, so they tried me to, to to stay, and I say no, this is not a good idea uh, because I, I I know that it was coming, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I joined another company, but this was really a bad move, and and then I decided, okay, maybe. Uh, it's my time to go back to France. So can you explain for the maybe people are interested what, what was wrong with the last ex London? Uh, well, the, the I mentality, mean, the culture, the crowd? No. Yeah, the mentality, I, I would say the culture was, was okay, but basically the project was super boring. Ah. It was like, uh, basically doing like, uh, how do you say that, but uh, some HTML, CSS, and um, kind of... Uh, uh, I, I, I don't know, I don't know all the stuff, but this was really basic stuff, you know, not really backend or frontend stuff. It was just some page and you have to integrate some images and stuff like this. I, I wasn't expecting that. Of course, this was like the infrastructure was on Ruby, but you only have to do like a boring tasks. And to be honest, I, I, I joined the company because the perks were attractive because okay, it was perks. like... Uh, you had access to some buildings. Yeah, exactly. It yeah. was a bit uh, trendy stuff like that. But at the end, this was not really my personality. All right, all right. So I just say, okay, no, just 
uh, I need change and I left to France. All right. So I, I'm sure we have time. So, you know, on the, on the channel, there's people from everywhere. Yes. Not only UK, so maybe they're interested in um, what was Paris look like. Because obviously, <laughs> guys, you notice we are not in Paris at all. So. <laughs> Don't go to Paris. <laughs> right. Never. He said it. So what, what was wrong there? The... No, no. But uh, some people love Paris. And uh, it's not my, my case. But uh, well, the thing is, I joined um, a company. Uh, yeah, I was basically, uh, I joined it to, to mentor. But, um, to mentor some junior. Yeah, basically, yes. It was like kind of, uh, we were like the most uh, uh, experienced and knowledgeable uh, devs. Uh, we were two. And um, yeah, basically, Recruit Me, this was a startup in Paris because the ecosystem was quite booming in, in France like the last years. Mm -hmm. And But the problem is like um, they hired a lot of uh, junior uh, people, which yeah. I, actually it's it's... it's I like the idea that, okay, they give chance to people, you know, because we are, at the beginning, we were always like a new learner. Yeah, but yeah, the yeah. problem is like they didn't have uh, uh, more experienced people. Yeah. And the code base, uh, basically, it was written like a procedural uh, code. Procedural code, like scripts. Yeah, exactly, like the scripts. scripts. They were like not... Uh, no test coverage, you said. Yeah, as the test know. coverage was awful, no, no object-oriented programming. Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah, it yeah, was yeah. really... You, you you didn't want to touch anything because you could break uh, without knowing. So I have a question for you on that yes? experience. So you said to me, I remember that was some uh, people who did like, a, you know, some training, intensive boot camps and stuff. Yes. So maybe some uh, viewers are doing those boot camps. And obviously, how did you feel about towards them? Like, were they, did they need more improvement or how can they do better? Or... Mm. Uh, it's a tricky question, so you can pass yes. if you want. I, I know, no, no, I think it's interesting to, I know there are companies that uh, even blacklist people from, uh, from, uh, wow. from, from cert some, something, because, uh, because to be honest, I think the, the, I suppose some courses are good, but maybe because, uh, uh, I think because they always see the same profile, you know, and yeah. I think I, I some companies they like to see like uh, maybe different profiles you know when you come and you say the i did this a boot camp which is family say okay this is another person from the boot camp and uh, so in the interview maybe it can go bad or wrong but i don't know maybe some people uh, did the boot camp and went fine yeah it depends on the character it depends on the character but i know some company for them this is a uh, that's i didn't know that so that's uh, yes this is something that i've heard and uh what i wanted to say but I suppose some of them uh, are good. But I think what is important, and I think we will talk that later, is, uh, yeah, maybe it's cool to do uh, your own project also. Yeah, yeah. To not only uh, depend on this bootcamp, but I think they give you projects also. We, we, we both didn't do those bootcamps. Yes. We were like learning on ourselves. So we have different views on that one. So that's what I thought yeah. was interesting. But, uh, but I think one important thing, and we discussed that uh, uh, during the day, is like the bootcamp is good because you will like learn the basics of uh, you know how to boot a server you know and now it is uh, write some HTML yeah exactly CSS some backend if you prefer frontend or oh, I don't know uh, the mobile I don't know this environment you know better than yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. I only like did the web but uh, I think the most important stuff is to work on the interview I think you have good yeah. uh, tutorial online yeah tell and, us about interviews then so, yeah like, I think I, I think it's, this will be, uh, I, I think you could be bad at your work, but if you know how to master the interview, you could be higher. I, I, I think uh, really like that, uh -huh. because this is a really specific uh, set of things that you have to do. And most of the time it's like the first part is, okay, you present what you did. So you try to, to be concise, yeah. to, yeah, 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 yeah. to explain, okay. Uh, we what, do the same, yeah. And yeah. then, and then. We'll, you move on on really classic questions, isn't exactly like yes. Solid patterns, design patterns. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The same. Okay. Sorry for the interruption. We had a hard hardware problem. <laughs> it's not software. Um, so Alex was uh, giving you some tips about interviews. So yeah, yeah. I'm not uh, definitely not an expert about interview, but 
the, I think this is like a summarize of what I discuss with other developers uh, that I encountered, and I think what people are looking at in interviews. So we say you have the first part when you basically present yourself, yeah. and then uh, in terms of most of the time, it's small exercises like you have to sort an array or this bus. This bus is this is. I think you have some. You can find some platforms where basically you will have always kind of the same. Uh, same exercise because they don't want to block you you know they don't want to give you something too difficult yeah. but they also want to see how you can solve it uh, yeah, 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 yeah and i think the important thing is uh you have to find a balance between trying to solve it and also you have to explain what you're trying to do because if you just you have to think yourself like uh, you can silence for uh, I don't know, 30 seconds a minute but it is important to communicate what you're trying yeah, to yeah, do yeah, yeah, yeah. and i think uh, even if you fail to solve it we sometimes if we should try to explain how you feel or you you think this can be, uh, because they want to assess like a real situation if like, yes the, the task is too hard they want to see how you behave if you collaborate with other people yes yes and i think uh, also of course we are looking for people who are competent but uh, we also want to see if we would be happy to work with you, you know? yeah yeah of course because of course. me me i like to know that the, uh, the guys that will have a really good uh, feeling with him you know that it's not like okay you solved it you're better than me but it's more okay uh, how we can solve it solve it together, together yeah, sometimes yeah. your block it will unblock you and vice versa yeah. so collaborative software yeah, yeah really collaborative good. software but yeah i think yeah the most important thing is prepare your interview this is different than day-to-day -day work and you have to know that it's always like different steps uh, you have to know few exercises few algorithms you have to present yourself your your background yeah. And also, you, I think what is important also, you have to, me, what I did is like, uh, I wrote in a, I have a, a, like a big book when I, I work a lot of questions by, uh, by team, like uh, ops, uh, backend, frontend, and on languages, dynamic, I don't know. It's, uh, to be honest, there are sometimes some things that I miss, but when I have an interview, I know that for a few days, I will just work on this lot of questions. And to be honest, the last interviews, most of the time, 90% of the questions, I, I have nothing to do with No, no, they were covered in what I did, oh, okay, in what okay. I studied. So I think you can, pre, pre, you can know what kind of question you will have. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you can Google on the internet. They yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They there's they a lot of questions. videos and yes. stuff. That's right. That's good. That's good. And uh, I think the last thing also I want to talk is about uh, when, you, when you have a first offer, I mean, one thing that is important is when you will apply for multiple companies, it is good to start uh, first with the company that you don't care. Because <laughs> yeah, as this is a discussion that we had uh, with Thomas. Yeah, yeah. You it, don't want to uh, apply for Google, Amazon, Facebook, Netflix straight away, right? Yes, right. exactly. You have to keep for the end the, the companies that you really like because you know, uh, for example, you stop interviews for six months, one year, yeah, yeah, and you yeah. have to refresh like your mind uh, how how an interview it's process like a warm up, warm exactly warm up. Warm so, yeah. so you have no stress. The companies that you don't care, you say okay, let's do that. And the good thing is like even if you have an offer, the good thing is like you have to bargain. Uh, bargain. Well, what does it mean? Uh, the so, salary, you mean? Like if you have an offer and an offer. Yes, exactly. Uh, but. I, the good thing is that even if you don't care about the company, the offer that you have, you can still say to the company that you like, if they give you an offer, oh, but, you know, I have also an offer yeah, for yeah, this yeah, company. Yeah. So, yeah, they will say, okay, this guy, uh, many companies want it on the yeah, market. It must be good. <laughs> it must be good, exactly. And this is really funny, but just because of that, I think they can really give a good salary, good increases, because basically you have to, also, you have to say high salary. You don't have to lower, you know, your, your salary. Yeah, of course. You, you need to do some uh, benchmarking as well. You have to Google yeah. what's it Yeah, benchmarking. But also, you, you, I think if you think you're worth, uh, you, you worth, I don't know, 60K, uh, you don't have to say to company, oh, I think if you give me 50, it's okay. Sir. Because I will give you 50. But if you say 60, they will say, okay, this guy, like, you think he has a he good value. Yeah. And in the worst case, they say, okay, we can propose 60, but we can propose a 55. So. Yeah, 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 I agree, I agree. So, yeah, that's, that's good. my uh, point on that. So, if uh, you have any more questions for Alex about interviews, drop some comments. Uh, but I, I fail also many interviews. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't be afraid. <laughs>
Yeah, that's really good. Um, um, if you don't mind, I'm gonna shift away from interviews. Yes. So, um, you've been doing now uh, software engineering for many, many years. Yes. So, what's what do you still like after those many years? What do you? Mm, what's that, challenging? That what's is like? a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Well, no. Uh, well, I think yeah. I think one thing like is that I found during all my job is like is the variety of tasks. Basically, I I don't think you have a, in this kind of position when you do software development, I don't think that you you will do the same task like uh, on a monthly basis. You know, you yeah, always yeah. have, for example, in my current company, we work in quarter and actually we don't use, uh, we don't use sprint stuff. Uh, we don't work in a sprint way. Sprints like doing um, two agile weeks. Agile uh, sprints. Well, sorry, nice. uh, agile stuff. We are more like in Kanban way. Uh, that, you know, I know there is like a big, uh, Fight, you know, between okay, is it better yeah. Kanban? But in my company, it's good because uh, we have a lot of freedom. We have all aim targets to do in a quarter, mm -hmm. and you can organize your uh, your stuff. Do you use the OKR framework? Or it's something uh, different. Like, how do you frame your objectives, like as a as a company? Well, uh, yeah, no, maybe we have this kind of uh, I don't know how they call it, like uh, uh, NBO. I think it's targets. Basically, you have some tasks. For example, you say, okay, you implement this feature, and you have three months. And this will count for 40% of the total. Uh, so okay, you will have okay, three tasks, okay, okay. you have 40%, 30%, 30%. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's like OKR. Okay, uh, okay, OKR, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, the same stuff. And uh, no, yeah, I think yeah, it's, you have always like uh, really different tasks. Uh, uh, but for me, like the technologies, I, I will have worked with Ruby uh, and platforms like Ruby on Rails, Sinatra. But yeah, no, I think it's, this is sometimes it's quite challenging. but. I think one thing that maybe frustrates me a bit sometimes is like when you join a big companies, yeah. you have a lot of code in place already. So yeah. you don't like really create stuff from scratch. Yeah, legacy code. Yeah, maybe. exactly. A lot of legacy code. And for example, in my company, we, uh, you know, if you join companies, you have to adapt to the big crew because some people, for example, in my previous company, we like to, when we push a merge request, if we could refactor a bit, you yeah. would do it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. in my current company, this is super conservative. Oh, so, so you don't do refactoring. You don't touch it because this is like, uh, you know, I was against that at the beginning. Yeah. But the thing is, if you really want to touch something, you do a separate merge request, you know, but we, I don't know how to explain that, but we are super conservative. And the thing is, we have, I think we have never done time or uh, oh, wow. really big regressions. Oh, wow. Okay. This is I'm quite good. I didn't know that. If you really do, do want to do a refactoring, you do a separate merge request, etc. But you don't, you know, we are not like in the mindset of, okay, I'm touching this part of code. Ah, okay, this part of code could be improved. We could do that because in the end, it starts to create big requests yeah, 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 and yeah. we have side effects because this is Ruby, obviously, and you no know, <laughs> dynamic languages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I think it works pretty well, yeah. Okay, it's very good. Yes. Uh, and yeah, I don't know what was the question. Uh, what do you enjoy as a yes. software? Yes. So you, you like diversity and it's like... It's yeah, nice. diversity of code. People are nice. Also, it's important to have a nice team mm -hmm. and people that will uh, help you or some tasks. And uh, yeah, it's also, it's cool to to learn new things. Of, obviously, there are some times where you like uh, will be more proactive than other uh, periods, you know? Yeah, 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 of course. But I to be honest, I think you have to learn by yourself uh, of... Uh, off side of the no not side projects you mean. side projects yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. you learn but because then your company you do your company job so mm -hmm. they don't give sometimes a lot of free time how, how do you manage to do that like reading like having coding projects or... yeah uh, to be honest i think yeah it's it's rending a bit but i don't think he, of course you have like hacker news you can yeah, yeah. read some stuff but i think the best thing to progress is like to to create a big project or but to be honest i think also when you when you have like many years of development stuff like that also this the problem is like uh, when you work the whole day you know on the you're tired you're tired and yeah, you know it's yeah, hard yeah. to do like side project and also this is an advice for some people that would start to do uh, web development or uh, i think some people did it but it would be nice if you could just uh, quit your job 
And for six months, one year, you said, okay, I will just do uh, software development. But you need to have some finance backup. Yes, exactly. It's like, it's because if, if you try to learn software development uh, aside from your work, you can yeah. do that, but it will be really, really hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is yeah, tough. Understand. All right. Um, I have a last question. Yes. An interview style for you. So how do you see yourself? It might be not software related, but you're happy as you are and you want... What's your objective? Because at the moment you're a software engineer, right? Do yes. you want to go to management? Do you want to carry on on the, I don't know, tutoring juniors or what are your desires? I want to become a monk. <laughs> to become a monk. <laughs> no, no. Um, well, to be honest, uh, I'm not. Um, I, no, I'm not uh, interested by the managing uh, stuff. To be yeah. honest, I really like like uh, my freedom. Yeah. And I, if I don't have meetings, this is uh, my best day for me. You know, in my company actually, I, have, I think I have one hour of meeting during the week. Yeah. And the rest of time is like. Uh, so you like you like that? You don't want. To... Yeah, I like. I, of course, I like to interact with others, but I work also. I work as a full remote developer. Okay. Currently, but um, yeah, I think I'm quite happy like uh, with uh, with uh, with just like doing some technical stuff uh, as a software developer, not. I don't want to manage anyone or oh, having fine. like big responsibility. Even mentoring, I think I, I wanted to do at the beginning. Yeah. But in the end, to be honest, I, I don't think sometimes I'm really good for that. Well, that's fine. I, I mean, from my perspective, you don't have to do those kind of stuff to have some recognition and having some positions change. It's like you do yes. what you want. And you yeah, exactly. But I, I also, I think uh, bon, this is uh, not... Uh, but I would like to transition progressively to the Web 3.0 and the uh, blockchain stuff. Uh, oh, educating stuff. And okay. uh, yeah, so I'm interested in smart contract uh, auditing on Ethereum. But to be honest, this is just the beginning. But I think we had a discussion. And uh, I don't know if um, blockchain is the future of Web 3.0 because I know there are other projects. Uh, like I think it's... What is the name? AI related. Um, something else uh, uh, artificial intelligence yeah, related no, yeah or? yeah uh, I, I don't remember the name but this is another project not blockchain but also about the web 3.0 you know mm. and i think we have time of course but in the end i think yeah, uh, ai and blockchain maybe this is the future of, of software. Uh, software development so okay. and i know the salaries are quite good there so <laughs> it's good he's a mercenary <laughs> yes all right, that's good. I think that's the end of our first part. Yes. Uh, do you have any questions for me? Uh, like anything software related or Go or I don't know. Do you want to ask me something? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, do, you, <laughs> do you? But uh, yeah, but this is, could be a whole interview. Like I can tell you, but. Uh, oh, you have only one question. One question? <laughs> okay, let me think about it. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you, well, well, how do you see yourself in uh, five years, for example? I think this yeah. Is yeah, that's good. Um, well, as you know, I'm a senior software developer. So either I'm going to management, either I'm going staff engineer, or either I'm going like a technology specialist. So I would like to stay uh, heavily on technical stuff. Okay. Because my point of view, and it's only my point of view, is like, Technology changes so fast that you have to be, you have to keep up basically. So I don't want to manage people because manage people, you always find a way to manage people. As in, once you learn how to do it well, it's like it's, it's the same. And I think the beauty of our jobs is it's never the same and it's always changing. So I want to carry on on that trend, you know, learning. So you would like to do like a kind of staff uh, engineer in the end or like, CTO? I mean, if you have like a, a goal uh, mm, not, nece not necessarily cto because cto means you quite hands off and you yes, just like that's true, yeah. you just you read really about do. uh yeah you, you don't just, do code anymore like when you're yeah you, you just be aware of new technology and you can yes. make decisions but you're not that's like true. you're not like deeply in code and that's what i like and that's yes. why i changed so yeah yeah i see that's good i good. wish you good luck thank you so that was the first part Guess the language. <laughs> ah, c'est pas ça.
Well, uh, so, sorry. <laughs> ah, pardon. <laughs> um, okay, so welcome back to part two. Hello. Hello, guys. So, welcome back. Okay, so we're going to play Guess the Language. So, you're going to see some uh, codes, and you have to guess the language, as the name says, okay? Okay. So, uh, and then there's a leaderboard. So, there was someone on episode one who did a certain score. So, we're going to compare to you. Uh, after. Okay, so I see some code written, and then I have to guess the language. Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. So there will be three games, so that's one. Yeah? Okay, so, uh, three, okay, okay, that's fine. There's only, I think, seven languages. Okay, so first one is that one. I don't know. The, you can well, I, well, I see Python object, so... Is he, are you trying to trick me, or...? <laughs> it doesn't look like... It looks a bit like Ruby, but... No, it's not it's a, do you want a hint? Yes. It's a for scientists, but it's not Python. Mm, is it a library? Uh... No, it's a proper language. Ah, uh, I know. Is it not R language? No. Almost, almost. Oh, that's tricky. Python, Meta? No, I don't know Meta. Uh, Matlab? Matlab? Ah, Matlab. <laughs> oh, ouais, putain, mais je pense jamais que c'est... C'est pas grave. Matlab? Okay, nice. Did you heard about this one? Yeah, I heard it, but uh, yeah, to be honest, I never... Uh, yeah, right. I never deal with this stuff. It's okay. Next one. But is it, is it used uh, for what? Huh? Is, so they use it like for statistics or...? I use it at uni. It's ah, okay. Famous. Okay, like okay. When you want to do some engineering and doing some... Uh, Flow mechanic or mm. fluid mechanics, you use uh, MATLAB basically. It's, okay. It's all right, but it's not proper language. I mean, uh, sorry, it's a language. It can do stuff, but mm. it's more for scientists. All right, this one then. Okay, is this what a big function or no? Or is it? It looks like Scala, no? Uh, no. Peter. Is it, no, it's not a scale. No, not a scale. Uh, is it like a kind of functional or is it more like... You can use it as functional. You can use it. Is it the one that you use the... Comment ça s'appelle? Uh, ça ressemble à Ruby, là. Looks yeah. like Ruby? Yeah, but, uh, but I don't remember the... Elixir. No, this is not Elixir. No, no, no. no. Uh, I'll give you a hint once again. Uh, actually, give me your hint. You know which channel we are. We are ah, like... this is go. This is go. <laughs> ah, this is go. <laughs> oh my god. All right. Oh, sorry. Next one. So that was go. Okay. All right, that one. So I did the. I did. I prepared the game like a while ago, so I don't remember anything. Yeah, okay, but this look uh, like. Uh, oh, is it uh, JavaScript ES six? Oh, TypeScript, no? Uh, Because I see the let. Ah, but the let is used also maybe in C sharp. No? So you have the array there. You can see there. The strongly typed. Ah, okay. So there are types. Okay. No, this is. I don't go top. Ouais. Just go. Because I'm not going to put it by Ah, it's tricky, yeah. Hein? Ah, go, putain, but I'm 7. Oh, tu viens, je suis pas trop utilisé. Euh... Qu'est-ce qu'elle attend T'as des lettres Il y en a plus de 4. On repart Vas-y, vas-y. Putain, mais qu'est-ce que ça pourrait être Ok. Top. Ok. Is it the same Yeah, okay, it's the okay. same. So I'm gonna help you. It's used for mobile. Ah, it's used for mobile Yeah. Ok. iOS or... Oh, if oh. I tell you iOS... Yeah, ah, a Swift right. Yeah, it's Swift. Ah, ok. Good job. But yeah, I, I have heard a lot of good uh, in, uh, input about uh, Swift. But I think they uh, no, but I, I think they use it uh, for backend. But I guess this is not uh, is not uh, mainstream. Okay. Ah, il y a des trucs que je connais pas là, les symboles ici et là. So uh, I'll give you a hint. So do you know those uh, operators? Those are like um, piping operators. So you have that often in. Functional program. Ah, okay. Okay, okay. So, the, is it F sharp? Yeah. Ah, okay. 
Good job. <laughs> no, because I know you use it some functional, and uh, this was the only one that I couldn't yeah, see. Yeah, the... good job. This is was F sharp. Yeah, good nice. job. Nice. All right, next one. Okay, this looks like Java, no? <laughs> Almost. Something Almost. quite disgusting. Okay. Uh, today. This is not, no, this is not Scala, no? No, 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 no. Java. Yeah, I don't know why I say Java, because I think I... But this is not uh, JavaScript. Uh, no, 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 no. Do you have a int? Yeah. It's... Um, um, it's French. Is it... Uh, no. Ocamel? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> PHP. <laughs> PHP. Uh, I think there's a last one. I don't know what was this one again. I forgot. Sorry. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Oh, so is it? Could be Kotlin. Yeah. You Good job. Do. You've you've done some Kotlin. Yeah, a little bit, but yeah, I recognize uh, uh -huh. because it looks like uh, Java, but on a but, but definitely nicer mm. to, to read it. Good job. Good job. I think I have ah, two cool. free points. Well done. Yeah, yeah, seven. it's good. Thank you. But yeah, some some of them are tricky, like, but the PHP yeah. one was good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I good miss job. that. All right, Alex. Welcome for the second game, All second right. mini game. So Let's it's a go. it's a pictures round. Okay. Uh, basically, you're gonna have um, some old objects, and you have to try to find out what it is or what it is used for. But it's like related to computer or software, basically. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I'm not sure to see, but yeah, let's let's try to. The first one is really easy. Okay. So what is that? Do you remember what it is? So this is a kind of hardware in the computer? Yeah, almost. Ah, but I mean, this is a museum now of... Uh, is it in England? Do you, do you remember? Yeah, it's in England. Do you remember what it is? Usually you don't see it like that, but you see it close with the disc spinning. Ah, uh, is it... Uh... You want a hint? Yes. Um, Bletchley Park? Huh? Huh? Bletchley Park? Bletchley Park? No. I'm no. Sure. You want another hint? Okay. Um, Enigma? Ah. Uh, <laughs> was it? Is it the first mm. computer? No. Okay, don't tell me the... That's the uh, Turing machine. Have you seen Imitation ah, Game? Ah, Turing machine. Have you seen uh, Imitation uh, no, Game? No, no, I've never seen. Ah, okay. You need to watch it. It's like when they were cracking German codes ah, from Enigma okay, yes. during the Second World War. Ah, yes, okay. No, no, I haven't seen it. Okay, okay so this is the first... Uh... Oh, my God. Yeah, but it's closed. So usually you see the disk. It's open, sorry. So usually you see with the disk spinning with the letters. When they're ah, trying okay. to crack the code. You know? Okay, okay. Yeah? That was a Turing machine. Turing machine, okay. All right. Ready for the second one? Yeah, yeah, let's go. All right, what is that? <laughs> it's really old. Is it like a, yeah, a disc? It's like Greek. It's really old. It's Greek? Greek, yeah. It's a wheel? No. It's related to computer, so that's a massive hint. Related to computer? No, I don't see. So it's a machine to calculate um, astronomy stuff. Really? It was, it okay. was really, it's really old, like 2000 years. Mm. But they already like automated some computation. Really? I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. It's fine. Okay, now that's interesting. All right. Next but, one. Okay, okay. Yeah, tell me. No, no, yes. Yeah, how do they... Okay, so they calculate the... Yeah, the... Like the okay, okay. The stars, the position yeah, yeah, of okay. the stars. Is like, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's cool. All right. What is that thing? 
uh, is back to the future. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, do you know what are those tubes there? So what is it some light uh, inside now? Mm, no. You can see two things here. You can see like this weird round circle here and a bigger circle. Ah, is it uh, when you display movie? Or, but no, but it is related to the computer, right? Yeah, and uh, I'm really, I'm really bad at this camera. <laughs> it's okay. Yes. No. Uh, uh, so those are transistors, and those are for sound. For what? Sound, like uh, this to propagate sound. Okay. So that's a vacuum, vacuum tube radio oh receiver. <laughs> Could never find that. It's okay. a very very old. Uh, Radio, so basically those are mini, mini CPU, okay. basically. But it's really old. Ah, okay. So <laughs> where, where it was created, what, in the uh, oh, 90... Uh... I don't know, 30s, 40s, I okay, don't know. Okay, okay. I'll put the, the link on. Okay, okay. What is that thing? <laughs> We're back to... <laughs> Ruby Cube. <laughs> <laughs> We're back to uh, uh, Antiquity. Have you ever seen that one? No, never. Okay, it's it's really hard. So I'm yeah, no, I, I, there's no way I can find it. It's a Roman dodecahedron. So we we don't know for sure what it was used for, but it's like twelve faces. Yes. And it was used to calculate length or, or to count things basically. They were putting a thread on one end and a thread on the second end and then third and then with the quantity of rope they used, they knew what it was, or to measure distances as well. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. Right? It's really hard. Hey, it was sorry. used, okay, before. Uh... Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Okay. Before. Last one. And they never, uh, yeah, uh, we never reuse like a kind of more modern. Uh... Yeah, no, because I suppose it was used in a time where you don't have all this yeah, yeah, way no, to it's... compute. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, last one. I've been really mean with you. It's really hard. No, but it's <laughs> funny, but yeah, there is no way. Uh... I, I'm really bad, like. To, no, to... it's fine. What is this thing? It's not really a computer, but it's like ah, kind of is related. it not like the first? Uh... Uh, printing. Uh... Yeah. Uh, printing. Gutenberg. Yes. Yes. Gutenberg. Good job. It's a Gutenberg, Gutenberg press. press. Ah, okay. Right. And how did you find it? Uh, I think because uh, this is a paper. Uh... Ah. Yeah. Good job. Well and done. Also because I call my nephew Gutenberg. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. But yeah, it's I never like uh, ever really look on how it looks like. That's it's funny. Good job. Good okay, job. now that's interesting. And right. I think yeah, it's an interesting. Uh, I think I, I read somewhere that the, the Gutenberg press it was really uh, you know there are certain points in the story where like it's really a, a huge shift. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. because uh, in the past the monk, for example, they were like. Uh, rewriting books and so on, and then it changed uh, like completely. Yeah. I think it was a, a big gap in uh, human history. Spreading knowledge, basically. Yes, exactly. Yes, it was really... oh, okay, that's cool. Well done. Um, okay. Questions round now. <laughs> you ready? So it's like a multiple choices question. Okay. That's the last mini game. Okay, okay. So what does RAM stand for? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So is it remote activated machine? Is it rage against the <laughs> microwave? Is it random access memory? Yeah, I think this is the third one, no? It is the Royal okay, Academy that, of Medicine. That's quite easy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, the uh, third one. Is it your last final word? My last final word. Oh, maybe Royal Academy. <laughs> good job, good job. One point. Random access memory, OK. All right. Second question? Yeah. Which one is not an AWS ah, that's interesting service? I don't have many knowledge. Okay. So is it Amazon Panorama? For me, it doesn't feel uh... Amazon Photon? Or Amazon Detective? Oh, oh sorry. For one, Amazon Lumberyard. Which is, oh, I have no idea. I think it will be just a wild guess. But I, I think Amazon Photon could exist. Lumberyard, what does it mean in French? Uh, Bouchon. Oh. <laughs> Lumber. Uh, I think detective, this is just empiric. Uh, I would say uh, Amazon Panorama doesn't exist. All right. This is your final last one. Ah, okay. <laughs> A service d'image. 
Ouais, elle est dans, yeah, elle est dans un panorama. Il y a d'autres Amazon photos. Et quels sont les autres services So Amazon Panorama is for machine learning imagery. Okay. So you train model with uh, um, images. Yes. Detective is like a security guard for security okay. purpose. Okay. And Lumberyard is, that doesn't exist anymore, but that's a, a gaming service from Amazon, which just don't exist anymore. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what, a gaming service? Yeah, yeah. I, I think hosting something or okay. hosting platform or probably related to Luna. I don't know if you heard about Amazon. Yeah. Luna. The like Stadia, Google Stadia. Ah, yes, okay. Um, cloud gaming. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, Photon doesn't exist basically. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah I don't know why. I like the the way it sounds. <laughs> yeah, that's just made up. All right, quote. Are you good? Do you read a lot of books? Do you know who said what? Right, I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's try this let's one. Let's see. Who said science is what we understand well enough to explain to a computer? Art is all the rest. Let's see what we understand well enough to explain. Is it Knuth? Is it Follower? Is it Martin? Uncle Bob? Or is it Liskov? Who could to be honest, I would say, I, I say Martin Fowler. But I'm, Martin Fowler? Yeah. It was Knuth explained to computer. Yeah, it yeah, means okay, like, um, it's nice. It's quite related to um, AI, right? They know what they can do, but then we humans are the creative one, basically. Mm. Yeah, it's quite, uh, quite a That's nice. nice sentence. When was Go first released? <laughs> okay. You don't do Go, but... No, no, but uh, yeah, it's a little bit interesting. 2003, 6, 9, or 12? How uh, do you think uh, it is? I think I'm thinking between 9 and 12. Uh, because now 2003, I think it's too early. Mm -hmm. 2000, I would say 2009. 2009? Yeah. Ah, you were close. You were right. Sorry. Ah, so 2009, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah, good job. I know it was old enough. But not so much old, like so. Good job. Yeah, it's quite a modern ish, mm. modern ish uh, release. Good job. That was the fourth Thank question. Thank you. And the last question <laughs> What does the HTTP status 508 stand for? Is it bad gateway? No. Is it I'm a sugar pot? I don't know if it's that. Insufficient storage? Huh? Or loop detected. I, I don't know where, but I have read something like uh, this is like a cookie. Uh, you know what? I will say I'm a sugar pot. Okay, I managed to fool you, but it, I'm a sugar pot doesn't exist. I don't know. I'm, really okay. I'm a sugar pot is inspired by I'm a teapot. Ah, I'm a teapot. Which is a for something, which was in the previous podcast. I'm glad you didn't watch it yet. <laughs> but. Do you want to make another guess? I, I don't think it is bad gateway. No. Pretty sure this is not bad gateway. No. Uh, sufficient storage. But this is like, uh, okay, this is server side. This loop is... detected. Maybe loop detected? Good well, job. Loop detected. Okay. Good job. Good well, job. Uh, loop detected. So like what? The server is just hanging and... Uh... I don't know. Yeah, it <laughs> <that> looks... <laughs> okay, now I have to read on it. <laughs> I, I think the question is super uh, funny. <laughs> Thank you. Because this is really not the usual stuff. Yeah, yeah. Did you enjoy the podcast? Uh, yeah, no, no. Great. All right. Then. Really good, guys. <laughs> you have to do it. All right. Um... Well, I think it was nice, uh, nice to join you on this podcast. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. joining me. Nice, yeah. Uh, I think just to summarize what we did in my own experience, uh, yeah, I think uh, you shouldn't be afraid of your capacities because there is like the imposter syndrome, like many people sometimes have it, you know, they feel that they're not the right fit for the company or, or they say, okay, I'm, I'm really bad because I don't know this stuff, but you know, uh, You have always people to help you, and sometimes you don't know everything. Also, when you join a company for the first time, 
it's important to 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 don't hesitate to ask questions because it's okay like the first first few months you yeah. just discover the 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 product and yeah i think he, you we don't i think we don't, don't for me what i expect when someone joins the company is like to to ask questions Mm-hmm. to to be really friendly i don't like people like uh, even if they are good you know you don't have to be like uh, condescending condescending exactly and yeah, no you yeah, just be nice uh, do your job and uh, be curious and exactly be curious very nice and good luck for the future yeah well thank you alex thank you bye 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 see you guys take care see you It's the more relaxed part, Alex. So we're gonna okay. play some uh, mini games. Second one. Désolé, vas-y, on va. Ah, t'inquiète. Quoi? Oh, okay. Non, je couperai. Ok, ok. Um, all mais, right. Mais t'arrives à tout monter, ça fait pas un truc dégueulasse. Non, t'inquiète. Ok. Mon computer en a. Come to South of France. <laughs> This is a nice place to live. Can hear the bell. Mais tu sais, mais gros, mais ça va être un enfer à monter. Parce qu'il y a des coupures sans âge. Ah ouais, t'arrives à. Mais ça, ça arrive à faire en sortir un truc pas dégueulasse. Ah ouais, bah ah, tu ça regardes, ça. regardes le podcast. Hein. Ah ouais, t'as fait plein de, il y avait plein de coupures au podcast. Ouais, ouais. ça prend okay. deux heures, tu vois. Ah c'est sympa. Putain, mais faut trop que tu le fasses avec Manu et Thomas, ils vont kiffer. Ouais, ouais, ouais. C'est très marrant ce jeu-là. C'est vrai que c'est. J'étais bien eu hein, sur. J'étais bien eu sur quelques. Ah quelques ouais, non, mais il y en a. Franchement, je me suis fait fumer. Mais euh, bon, Matlab, de toute façon, je connaissais pas. Enfin, j'avais jamais vu la gueule du truc. Donc, j'aurais jamais pu trouver. PHP. C'est vrai, j'en ai jamais fait du PHP. Ouais. Mais après, euh, qu'est-ce qu'il y avait Il y avait euh, Swift. Ouais, Swift, c'est pareil. Enfin, mais c'est vrai qu'au final, putain, ça c'est mon problème, c'est qu'avoir fait que du Ruby. Putain, il n'y a pas de langage. Je... 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 I don't think I don't. I know this guy. This I know the uh, other, but uh, Linux. I think he wrote the. I might be wrong, but I think he wrote a uh, big part of Linux. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know that. Good. Okay, that makes sense. Why not? Huh? 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 Bletchley Park. Eh ben voilà. Parfait. Merci. Franchement, euh, c'est c'est trop cool. Attends. C'est cool. T'aimes bien le format Ouais, le format. Le, franchement, les, les questions et tout, c'est vraiment sympa. <rire> mais par contre, putain, mais les, 